PC players hate whenever I say this, but it's absolutely the truth, and don't let any of them tell you any different. On console, there is a bigger skill gap physically between the worst and the best players in Siege than there is on PC. On PC, everybody can aim. Some people can aim a lot better. Some people have way better mechanical movement and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. There are There's absolutely a skill gap when it comes to physical skill on Siege on PC. But on console, that gap is gigantic. And the single best thing that you can do on console to improve is improve your aim. And put yourself in a, in a position where you can make quick adjustments with your right stick. So many people on console siege can only make adjustments with their left stick, which is basically adjusting by strafing. And it's so much slower. If you find yourself resisting to make sight adjustments with your right stick, you need to change that. You need to go into the training grounds and set up drills to allow you to uh, get more comfortable with your right stick adjustments. And if you do that, you will improve at console siege faster than any other single thing that you can possibly do. Um, and that, that's a luxury that you actually have on console that we don't on PC because on console, you will run up against people who will not have good enough aim to punish you for putting yourself in a bad situation. They just won't have the aim to punish you. On PC, for the most part, every player you encounter will punish you if you enter their crosshairs or enter their screen and put yourself in a really bad situation. And uh, on console, that's just not the case. So if you become one of those players who has above average aim, <clears throat> if that aim is going to carry you further on console than that same set of skills will on PC. Um, so I wanted to throw that out there. Like if, if Pete's looking for like specific stuff, because a lot of what we've talked about here has been like big picture mindset stuff. Um, I think that the, the biggest thing for me that I started realizing as I was, you know, traversing through the silver gold ranks consistently on my solo queue account was number one, micro positioning. That's what I call it. But like, I feel like there's a lot of really smart players out there that aren't like super mechanically gifted, but they always take the best position to get into a gunfight. You know, like if you're, if you're in, if you're in a room, and you get droned out. A lot of times, I'll, like my mindset has always kind of been, okay, they know where I am. I'm going to go away from here. And I feel like there's a, there's a group of players out there that are really tough to deal with where they don't say, well, I'm, I shot the drone. I'm not going to go away from here. I'm going to change my position to put myself in a place that has good cover and also puts me in an unpredictable position. Even though the enemy might know I'm in this room, they're not going to predict that I'm exactly here. And that is going to give me an advantage based upon where the enemy is getting ready to come from. And that simple mindset right there is, is, is honestly one of the biggest light bulb moments for me, because I want you to think about like that scenario where, okay, I, I get droned out. Okay. I'm on defense. They know I'm here now, so I'm going to rotate away. Well, okay. I'm rotating away and maybe I'm going to a different room or whatever. Well, in the process of doing that, Who's to say that there's not an enemy that's right outside of this door that's waiting on me that I'm not aware that they're there and they get an easy kill on me because I'm walking, I'm making sound, maybe I'm sprinting, I don't know they're there, they could have their back turned to me and I die to somebody I never got a shot off on. Whereas if you think about the information that you have as that defender, a lot of times that's going to be better information than you have in the majority of your gunfights. You just got droned out. Like, like, let's pretend that you're in theater on penthouse and you got droned out from the bathroom hatch. Okay. And they, they, you know, they brought the drone in there. Okay. There's a lot of possibilities on where the enemy could be coming from, but a lot of times there's a person sitting on that bathroom hatch that's getting ready to push you. And that's good information for you. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, um, a lot of times more information that you're going to get if you rotate away from that room and go somewhere else. And then, you know, start that process all over again. Sure, they know roughly where you are, but find a position in there that gives you an advantage on that person who's likely to push from the Hall of Fame door or the bathroom hatch and win a gunfight. And don't, the the, the next thing that I'll say here that's kind of specific is limit the amount of deaths in which you die to somebody that you did not know existed. Limit the amount of deaths that you have in which you die to somebody that you did not get a shot off of. If you get into a gunfight and you lose, fair enough. But 
if I if I died as if I'm that rumor and I get droned out and I'm rotating across the map and I died as somebody who's repelling on a window, I had zero information that they were there and I died without even getting a shot off. That's just a junk death. Wouldn't it have been better for me to stay there, play my life, and try to win a gunfight based upon an enemy that I have a little bit of information on? That's kind of that's kind of like that's one of the biggest light bulb moments for me. Whenever I stopped being afraid to stand my ground, take the best micro positioning I can and try to win a gunfight versus always trying to sneak up behind enemies. Like that's been my mindset in this game for so long was like, oh, they know where I am. I need to go somewhere else now so they don't know where I am and then I'm going to sneak up behind them. No, at some point you have you have to start weighing the consequences of staying where you're at and just winning a gunfight, standing your ground versus trying to, you know, rotate across the map and maybe being an easy kill in the process. That, I think just on, sorry, I was, was going to say just on the topic of that, I mean, and that's so true because, um, you know, that heated moment when you die and it's just like, I, I mean, yeah. but I usually, I, you know, for me, I internalize that and I'm fr so frustrated with myself. But what I've started doing now is actually reviewing that and going, God, I was such an idiot for doing, for moving there or, you know, in your head. I, when you said that in my head, I was picturing like running from aqua bar through um, past pool table and someone being at the window or there being a rotate opened up. And, you know, I could just picture times where I've made those mistakes. And I think that if you are, Perhaps this is more for PC, but if you can do it on console with a capture card and you can not just look back at all your cool moments, but look back at some of the shockers, there is there is learning opportunities within them. And I've been finding that myself. I'm, I'm a little against looking at, uh, looking at own gameplay to improve. If, if it starts becoming like, um, let's say you play 10 games and then you, you watch uh, most of it back or you watch all your deaths back. I don't think you'll get as much out of it as if you were to just write down the main one thing you messed up. Like, why did you die? Because everyone, even when they come with, oh, it was lagging, why was he there, that was a headshot, I'll, I'll accept it. I'll, I'll give all of these excuses to you. What could you have done better, right? Uh, okay, he didn't eat the headshot. It's clearly the game's fault. What could you have changed? Um, start looking at those things and... People, like, how many people die sprinting? Yeah. Stop running around all the goddamn time and just hold something. Um, if, if, you're, if you're a defender playing a, a, a roam, well, maybe go one room closer to site. Mm -hmm. So when your defense dies, or defense dies, you actually have a chance of impacting the round. Because if you run to the other end of the map, there's two options. Either you destroy the team over there, or you're useless. That's that's pretty much it. Well, and if you want to be the, the the solo king, then just be it a little bit closer to sight. Let me throw a, a caveat onto what you just mentioned there. Like if you are doing that <clears throat> deep, 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 deep room on the other side of the map, you are making a play that requires the other team to not be good in order for you to succeed. It, basically, mm -hmm. you're saying I'm 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 putting myself into a position where if the other team does their job, watches a flank sets up a flank drone, yeah. then I'm not going to succeed and I'm going to be useless in this round. And it's that's also a terrible way of practicing. Exactly, exactly. Put yourself in a position where no matter what the enemy does, you're going to have a chance to make a difference on the round. And that's like, that's like the biggest difference for me to where me playing this game now versus maybe even like a year ago is I'm trying to limit the amount of times where I, I'm, I'm forcing, you know, I'm expecting the other team to make a mistake in order for me to succeed. 